Well, you're awfully warm after that last dance. Don't you think you better put on your coat? For the twentieth time. For the nineteenth time. You want to be accurate. Every morning with the ship's first plunge, every afternoon at tea. And every evening at dinner. And again when we say good night. Oh, that's four times a day. We've been out of Cherbourg five days. Oh, that makes sense. For the twentieth time, Miss Bennett, will you marry me? I think not. I don't quite understand. What do you know about me, Stephen? I know that you're the most perfect woman in the world. But you lawyers are generally so technical, always looking for flaws. Will you marry me? I think not. No, it's nothing. Just madness, I guess. The music, champagne, and the last night on ship. Why have you never married, Stephen? Because I never met you until five days ago, my dear. Ah, you're a darling, but tell me the real reason. You come to my stateroom for a cocktail, then I'll tell you. All right. <laughs> All right, Trim. You know, Stephen, I don't think I could sleep unless you proposed. You'd be like something left out of a perfect day. <laughs> mm. Of course, uh, you know, I'm just an amateur at this. <laughs> An amateur? Mm -hmm. Are you sure that you weren't a pre volsted bartender? <laughs> mm. <laughs> Thank you. Sweetheart, I am drinking to you. Do you think the gentleman would mind very much if the lady kissed him? Just out of appreciation of a very happy voice. <laughs> and you say you don't love me. I don't recall ever having said that I didn't love you. <laughs> Just why did you come here? Why? Hmm. Oh, let me see. Oh, I think it was out of a deep curiosity to know why you never married. <laughs> I've been watching marriage from the sidelines for over 15 years. Ever since a boyhood friend of mine broke with his wife. Oh, were you so interested in the lady? I never saw her. I never wanted to see her. The wife was beautiful, at least so I've heard. So beautiful that men swarmed about her like bees. Flattered her. Consoled her when her husband's business kept him late at his office. Made her think she was being intentionally neglected. I think I understand the rest of that story. She started running around with other men, ceased loving her husband. Maybe she thought she had a good reason. Well, maybe she did. But that doesn't excuse her walking out on her husband and abandoning her child. Tell me, Stephen, why you took such an interest in a woman that you never saw? I was coming to that. My husband felt that he was going to pieces. He asked me to become the child's guardian. And you did? Yes, I engaged a governess for her. Brought her up as a sort of kid sister. Constance is now 18. You still have her? Well, well what's become of your father? He went away. Died on a debauch. A South American died. I suppose that wrecked your faith in women. Made you think they were all that sort. Yes, I'm afraid it did. Until I met you. I'd like to see Connie's picture. Oh, I'd love to.
Oh, she's beautiful. Her baby picture is inside. Of course, I couldn't expect anyone else to be as interested as I am. She's really lovely. Won't you let me see her sometime? Let you see her? And all the time I've been begging you to marry me and... take her mother's place. Well, what's the matter, dear? Well, nothing at all. I... It's just getting late. I think I'd better get back to my own room. I'll see you to your stateroom. No, no, thanks. I'll see you in the morning before we dock. Good night. Good night. Mr. Stephen Kennedy, please. Hello? Hello, Stephen. Stephen, you forgot something. Yes, you did. You forgot to pose to me again. Well, so I did, my dear. Will you please forgive me and uh, marry me? Of course I will, you goose. You know I will. You will? You will? Oh, say that again, darling. I think I must be dreaming. Of course I'll marry you. And I don't care how soon. Did you hear what I said? I'll be right over. Oh, no, you won't. No, I'll call the captain and have you put off the ship for distor disturbing a passenger. What on earth made you change your mind so quickly? Well, there are two reasons, darling. One is because I love you, Stephen. And the other... Because Connie's mother was such a rocker. Good night. Good night. Skyler! Good morning, Connie. Too early. Stephen hasn't arrived yet. Well, that's quite all right, my dear. There's something I want to say to you. Hmm. That you didn't want Stephen to hear? Quite right. Something I didn't want Stephen to hear. I'm expecting him any minute. You know, Connie, Steve may not understand our feelings toward each other. I get you, Skyler. He wouldn't like to hear that I've been going about with you in his absence. Right, Al. Steve still regards you as an infant. Perhaps it's a good thing that I'm going away, Scholar. Cruise to the South Seas will give me a chance to think things over. A chance to think over your proposal and us. Are you seriously considering somebody else? Oh, no one in particular. I've had half a dozen offers. Some good ones, some bad ones, and one or two in different. You know, Connie, we may not have much chance to talk confidentially here. 
So perhaps it would be as well if you came to my place. No one to interrupt, you know. They'll only be tonight, Scarlet. The yacht sails at dawn. Oh, then there are others? Oh, I've been collecting them for months, Scarlet. A young girl in New York never knows when she may need a friend. This is Hank Freeman. This is Barry Norton. This is Ruddy Kramer. And this one, oh, let's see. Oh, I've forgotten the name of the owner, but it fits the Yale Lock and Park Avenue. And I thought you were just a kid. Who, me? A kid? And carrying keys to some of the most eligible bachelor apartments in little old New York. You've uh, used them, of course. Not yet. But one can never tell in this age, Mr. Durkin. Ooh. Snowstorm may blow little Connie right into bad man's place some night. You'd let her stay and get warm, wouldn't you? You bet I would. And I'll wear my red flannel in case you feel platonic. Save them for the tropics, baby. You little hellion. <laughs> I'm crazy about you. Hello, James. Welcome home, Mr. Stephen. Stephen! Connie's gone. <laughs> How are you, Skyler? How are you, Steve? I'm fit as a fiddle. I'm sorry I slept too late to get down to the boat. Well, that's all right. I was busy. Oh, man or woman? I leave you to guess. Woman. Am I right? I've never known you to be wrong. <laughs> Mary? Who, me? Mm -hmm. No. Parisian model or just a millionette? No, and not even an actress. <laughs> now tell Connie all about it. No, I want to hear about you first. Same old speakeasy, same old gang, and the same old cocktail. You're not holding anything back, are you? Two proposals and half a dozen propositions. <laughs> of course, you, you turn them all down. The proposals. The propositions, I'm thinking over. <laughs> Get up, you vamp. <laughs> I thought you were going to look after her while I was away. Well... Oh, come on. Tell us all about it. Keep your secret. Well, uh, if I like her, don't you think you can? Like her? Oh, I'll love her. I think I'd better run along. Had an appointment that won't keep. Redhead? Well, she'd be redheaded if I'm late. <laughs> don't forget to drop by this evening. I'm sailing at dawn. Oh, sailing? Yes, with the Randolph. For a year's cruise around the world. You said I could go when you got back from Europe. Yes, but I didn't think you were going so soon. Well, Mr. Randolph's been holding up the trip a whole week, just so I could say goodbye to you. Is uh, Mrs. Randolph going? And all the little Randolphs. <laughs> In fact, it's going to be so respectable, I'm afraid it'll be boring. How about dining with us tonight? Thanks. Uh, suppose I phone you later. All right. Bye. Goodbye. <laughs> Think you're fooling me about that woman? There is one. Come on, confess. Well, I met her on the boat, the first day out for the Cherbourg. And you engaged before the ship docked. Marvelous, grand. I always said that you'd be a fast work if you ever got started. Well, of course she did. She held out as long as she could. No woman could hold out long against you, Steve. <laughs> You're the finest man in the world. Yes. Now, now, what are you after? I want you to take me to meet her. I want to find out if she's good enough for you. Who is she? <laughs> well, Miss Manners. Miss Joan Manners. Manners? I don't know of any manners in our set. Oh, she spends most of her time abroad. She was here last year, but... Uh, she didn't go out much, socially. Conserving her strength for a trip abroad, eh? Hmm. Can't you be serious for more than one minute at a time? I don't want to be serious. I want to laugh and dance and be gay. <laughs> That's right. Get it out of your system before you think of marriage. Or a proposition. <laughs> Take me to see Joan tonight. I want to meet her. All right, uh, we'll drop in on her for a moment or so. On your way to the yacht. Mm. I know I like her. But supposing she doesn't like me. Oh. She's fallen in love with your picture already. Good morning, Marie. Madame is in. Thanks. Uh, then I'll wait. 
I have orders not to admit anybody. Hmm. Especially Skylar Durkin, eh, Marie? Oh, your name uh, wasn't mentioned, sir. <laughs> How the great have fallen. Not even mentionable. You may go, Mary. Return in an hour. Good morning, Skylar. Aren't you a little early? Welcome home, Joan. Thanks. What? Oh, please, no Skylar. kisses. I hardly know how to begin. And so you began with the door lock. You might have asked me for the key. New locks cost money. Men accept keys more readily than they give them up. Now you're not going to tell me that you've really fallen in love. You've guessed it, Scarlet. Marriage? Nothing less. Have you told him about us? Taking no chances. Hmm. I have an idea that he likes his women, like his whiskey, straight. Would uh, an offer of marriage from me change anything? Not at this late date. You better spread your cards on the table. Well, men don't dig up their past for the women they love. Suppose somebody else digs up your past for him. But you're the only one who knows my past. Oh, my dear, my dear. Oh, you wouldn't tell, Scarlett. You wouldn't tell. My dear, I've never even mentioned our friendship. Thanks. That helps. May I inquire the fortunate man's name? Well, I suppose you'll have to know sooner or later. He's a young attorney. Stephen Kennedy. <laughs> oh, stop laughing. <laughs> Stephen Kennedy. Stephen Kennedy. Well, what's the matter with Stephen Kennedy? Oh, not a thing. Great fellow. Honorable to a fault. Abhors dishonesty in others. You know him. Well, I was born next door to him. Bunked with him through school. Kindergarten to college. It'll be amusing dining with you and Steve once a week. Oh, you wouldn't. Take my advice, lady. Put your cards on the table. Promise me you won't tell, Scarlet. Promise me. Oh, that letter that I wrote you from Paris. Will you give it to me? Oh, oh no. That's my souvenir. Oh, but Scarlet, you don't understand. Very nice. <laughs> so, you're really going to become a Benedict soon. Well, you're guessing, aren't you? No. Connie let the cat out of the bag before dinner. She said you'd ask her to call on your fiancé. Connie's a little devil. You know, I meant to keep you in the dark. I didn't want you arguing for a formal wedding. Oh, no. I never argue for any kind of wedding. Yes. So a lot of ladies complain. So far, I've been lucky. I used to tell myself that until I met. Just what do you know about this girl? Her past. Her past doesn't concern me. It's her future I'm thinking of. Our future. Looked her up in the social register? Why, I wouldn't care if they even left her out of the telephone book. <laughs> Nor on the police blotter? Don't be impertinent. You don't even know her name. Her name is Joan Manners. What are you suggesting? Or are you just uh, trying to be funny? If John were going to marry any man in the world except Steve Kennedy, I'd keep a close mouth and hope that everything would come out all right. What I'm going to say is tough on you. And it's not too easy on me, either. 
But maybe if you know the whole thing from the beginning, it won't pop up later and slap you in the face. Joan's a fine girl in many ways. You bet she's a fine girl. In every way. You better get out of here, Skylar. That is, if you intend to continue on this subject. She's had the lock changed since she met you. I won't be using this key again. You know, I ought to kick you out of this house. That's the way it's done, in books. Get out of here, Skylar. Now. She's a fine girl, Steve. In love with you and on the level with it. I'll keep away. Oh, here I am, all pretty up for the occasion. Well, what's up, an autopsy? Where's the court? Oh, you better run along now, Connie. I've changed my mind about uh, going out tonight. Oh, but I'm all ready. You promised to take me. You oblige me, Constance, by leaving us alone. Well, I'm still waiting for you to get out. Joan's a charming woman, Stephen. Think it over. Well, now that we're alone, tell me all about it. I'm sorry, darling, but uh, there's nothing to tell. You're taking me to meet Joan? go down to the yacht for the farewell party. Oh, I feel too rotten. You better take a taxi, dear. I'm better off alone tonight. Oh, come on, Steve. Snap out of it. I'll have to drop you off at Jones. She'll cheer you up. Yes, but the Fairfax Arms is uh, not on your way to the yacht. The Fairfax Arms? That's Jones' place. Well, goodbye, Steve. For a whole year. I won't be getting any mail from you, those out-of-the-way places. But I'll be thinking of you, big boy. You're Joan, and this man is on me. Yes, I'm Joan Manners. Won't you come in? Stephen's kid sister. Connie. Joan. Oh, darling. You really like me? Like you? Oh, I love you. Say, you're swell. I'm crazy about you. No, oh, I'm so glad. <laughs> Won't you sit down? Will Stephen be up in just a minute? He promised to bring me here, but he reneged. Oh, well, probably he had some very important business to attend to. He's in a blue haze that you couldn't cut with a knife. A blue haze? I'm sailing tonight for a year's cruise. I just had to see. Tonight? For a whole year? Sure. It'll give you and Stephen time for a nice long honeymoon without the disadvantage of the sisters. I'll... We'll miss you, Connie. Thanks. More than I can say for Stephen. What? What happened? Oh, I don't know. Something Scarlett Durkin said that tumbled one of Steve's pet castles. Scarlett Durkin? Yes. Oh, was it about me, Connie? Well... Yes and no. He said that he didn't think that Stephen should marry a girl he knew nothing about. Did he say anything more than that, do you know? Oh, but you'll get used to Skylar, and you've known him as long as I have. Oh, he's a bit free with propositions, but easy to put off if you know how. Connie, you mustn't become involved with a man like that. 
involved. I'm involved in right now. There's his key. But I haven't used it yet. I just thought I'd keep him on his toes. Oh, Connie, you shouldn't have keys to men's apartments. They're just souvenirs, my dear. That's what I thought. Joan, if you have any soiled linen, you'd better send it to the laundry tonight. Durkin's been talking. Connie, would you help me keep a secret, even from Stephen? If we women didn't stick together, it would be a man's world. But Stephen's your brother. I carry keys to men's apartment, even if I don't use them. And I'm still a good girl. You will always be a good girl, Connie. That's what Stephen says. He thinks I'm an angel. I guess that's one reason I fought it out with old man temptation. If I did slip, don't think I wouldn't try for a comeback. Oh, but if I'd only told Stephen. He'd forgive you and forget you, too. Men are like that. Oh, but I love him. Connie, I love him. Get over to the house and have it out with Stephen. Skylar slash George Rose, take a slice out of here. You love Stephen. Don't admit anything. Fight for him. You're right, Connie. You're right. But what if I do convince Stephen? Skylar has evidence in his apartment. And I've got the key to his apartment. And I've been dying to use it. Connie, give it to me and I'll stop there on the way back from Stephen's. Oh, no. I go where he go. You're not going to leave me out of this party. Oh, very well. But have you time to stay here until I get back? Sure. Good. The Warwick Manor, Fifth Avenue. Penny, we'll be right down. Thank you. Hello, Joe. Hello, Stephen. You didn't come for me, so I came for you. I was just trying to put on my best face for you. You look very beautiful. Well, they do say that handsome is as handsome does. Mm -hmm. Sit down, Joe, and won't you? You don't seem very glad to see me, Stephen. Well, it's just that... Uh, well, your visit is so unexpected. No, you haven't even kissed me. Oh, not like that, Stephen. That isn't the kind of a kiss I want to remember as your last kiss. Last kiss? Stephen. Stephen, I've come here to break our engagement. To ask you to release. Why? For your happiness and mine. You know, I'd rather remember the love of those perfect days on board ship than to endure a life petty jealousy. There can be no true happiness in a home where the wife's worst enemy is the husband's best friend. Meaning who? Skylar Dick. I've known Skylar Durkin for years. First as a friend until I found out what sort he is, and then as an enemy. Six months ago when I went to Europe, it was to escape his unwelcome attention. You know that I had to have the lock changed on my door because he'd stolen the key? You should have called the police. I thought of that, but I didn't welcome a scandal. And he's the type that would have said I'd given him the key. 
You're right. Half the town would believe him. And today he forced himself past my maid and demanded that I marry him. Had you told him that we were engaged? Oh, of course I told him. I told him how I loved you, that there never would be another man. Oh, I hoped that would end things, but it didn't. Scarlet Dickens said that you were his very best friend, and that you would believe anything that he chose to tell you about me. And that even if you did marry me, he'd have access to our home, that he'd always come between us. He was my best friend. I had every faith in him. Treated him as one of the family. But now... Now, oh, don't try to mend things, Stephen. There'd always be times when you believe that Durkin was right. No, no. This must be the end. Say goodbye. No, it's not goodbye. Then, you mean you won't release me? You bet I won't. I'll see Skylar Durkin in the morning. This isn't the end. It's the beginning. Are you all right, dear? Sure, I'm all right. Connie, I've seen Stephen, and I lied about Durkin. You don't think he'll find out, do you? There's a letter in Skylar Durkin's apartment. Oh, I've got to get it before he sees Stephen. Gosh, the paper. Lady in distress must get back in discriminating dash. Connie, will you give me the key to Scarlett Durkin's apartment? The first chance I've had for excitement in months, and you want to leave me out. But you mustn't go there, dear, and I want to get the letter. Please give me the key. All right. Get into a lot of men's apartments for that bunch of keys. Oh, what are you doing with these? Oh, oh, Connie, you shouldn't have keys to men's apartments. Throw them away. Shay, you're going to be a good influence on me. Oh, Connie, listen. Tell me about your mother. Do you know where she is? Nope. And I don't care where she is. She's a right. And maybe she wasn't all bad. Oh, yes, she was. And I'm going to be just like her if I don't get her mother to watch over me. Oh, poor little Connie. Connie, if I marry Stephen, Connie. You know, you've got to get down to that yard. Would you like me to take you down? Oh, no. Stephen may we let him come. It wouldn't do for him to see us there together. Oh, but Connie, I hate to have you go alone, do you? Oh, I'm used to it. Don't you worry about me. <laughs> hmm? Connie. I'll be thinking of you every minute. Have a beautiful time, darling. Goodbye, dear. Goodbye.
Man, look who's here. Connie. Disappointed? Why, this is the biggest surprise in my life. And a very pleasant one, too. So you decided to use my key. I said if it were anyone, it would be you. Great! Well, don't stand there gawking, Scarlet. How about a highball for a lady? And for plenty of ice. I'd crack an iceberg for you. <laughs> well, hurry up before it gets away from me. Here's that song. I don't know the number. Will you get it for me, please? And hurry. Joe Mammoth, please. Hello? Hello? Connie! Oh, Connie, you're not in Durkin's apartment. I fun I ain't, lady. I'm after this document. Any idea where they are? Who are you phoning? Oh, just telephone, I did. Yeah. Hello, hello, Connie! Hello? You. Bring some more icebergs, Skylar. Looks like a big night. I wish we were in Greenland where the nights are six months long. I don't know how happy I am that you came. Mm. Thank you, dear. You know, I've been waiting for this evening for two years. Connie, you don't know how happy I am. Really? Am I? What you've done. I'm going. Well, what did you expect coming to a man's rooms after midnight? I thought you were a gentleman. You can get away with that stuff with kids, but. I'll be all right. 
Hey, darling, he's going to be all right. Come on now, you go down and get aboard the yacht. Go ahead, Connie. Forget it. There you are, darling. He's going to be all right. Come on. You go down to the yacht and get away. Goodbye, little girl. Be a good little girl. Thanks, John. Goodbye, oh, darling. Oh, boy, I... What's that? You heard a shot at Mr. Durkin's apartment. I'll report it right away. Is it serious enough to call a doctor? No. But you might hand me a drink. It's just one of those things. You're lucky it wasn't worse. I... I always was lucky, until you met Steve Kennedy. You thought the daughter was as foolish as the mother, didn't you? Connie? Your daughter? Yes. I just found her tonight. And you tried to take her away from me, after trying to poison Stephen Kennedy with the truth about us, so that I never could see her again. You... Open that door! What's going on here? Who shot this man? It was just an accident. He's quite all right. I can if he isn't. Are you hurt badly? Hey! Skyler! 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 Dad! Hello, Joan. Hello, Stephen. I know you need a counsel. I'd like to defend you if you haven't made other arrangements. Well, that's awfully good of you, Stephen, but... I guess I haven't much of a defense. Well, you're through talking, Mr. Kennedy. Call the guard. I'll be outside. Thank you. Would you please tell me what happened that night? After you left my home? There's nothing that I can say that would do me any good. We must make the best defense we can. There must be some mitigating circumstance. You're very sure that I went right from your arms to the apartment of another man and shot him in cold blood, aren't you, Stephen? I don't like to think that, Joe. But if you won't talk, what else can I think? You're right, Stephen. You're only a man after all. I wish I were anything but a man. That would help me change my mind. I don't care to make any defense, Stephen. But I did not kill Becky. That's the truth. I believe you, Joan. But I want you to help me make the jury believe you. Well, I can say this much. I went to Skyler's apartment in an effort to make things easier for you and me. And he had been shot before I arrived. And you know who did it? He died without saying who fired the shot. Is that all the help that you can give me? I'll free you if I can. i tell you one thing, Joan. I'm going to fight this case as I've never fought one before. In the case of the people versus Joan Manners, Accused of the murder of one Skylar Durkin, we intend to show by the testimony of at least three reliable witnesses that she was found in the room with the body of the murdered man, the gun lying on the floor. The state will show that the defendant had ample time after firing the fatal shot to wipe away her fingerprints before police and apartment attaches 
burst into the room and found her with the body. The state will prove that when confronted by officers of the law who were summoned by neighbors to the death apartment, Joan Manners cunningly and deceitfully tried to conceal the death of her victim. We will expose the relationship between the deceased and the defendant in order to establish the motive for her crime. The defendant is represented in this court by a very shrewd and capable criminal lawyer, Stephen Kennedy, who will appeal to your chivalry where the life of a woman is at stake. I warn you, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, not to be fooled by his pseudo-chivalry or by his manly display of tenderness towards his guilty client. The defendant will be represented to you as a charming and comely young woman, and I admit her comeliness, and grant you that if Skylar Durkin were alive today, he could testify to her charms. I ask you to turn deaf ears to his pleading in behalf of a woman with the face of an angel and the heart of a monster. Stephen Kennedy's whole interest is a matter of counsel fees and what personal satisfaction he might gain were he able to trick you into a verdict of not guilty. I gather, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, from the eminent district attorney's remarks that uh, it is I who am on trial and not the defendant. Miss Joan Manners. In the course of a long and complex career as a criminal lawyer, I must confess that I have never yet been engaged in any case as completely baffling as this. The defendant, Joan Manners, whose character is above reproach, has, I regret to say, not fully given me her confidence in this matter. The district attorney will tell you that it is because of a guilty conscience, but knowing her character to be as impeccable as it is, I will assure you that her silence is based upon one of two things. Either she is completely ignorant as to who killed Skylar Durkin, or else she is shielding someone who is very dear to her. Knowing district attorneys and uh, their habits, I do not hesitate to prophesy that this very able prosecutor is simply itching to have me put the defendant in the witness stand so that he may tear her reputation to shreds. I want to assure him here and now that I have no fear of putting her in the witness chair to face even his caustic cross-examination. You heard the testimony of the elevator operator yesterday that he took you to the third floor of the apartment house in which the deceased lived at the unconventional hour of midnight. Will you tell the jury your reason for calling on Skylar Durkin at his apartment at an hour when no decent woman would dare to call on chaperone? Well, I was afraid that he was going to come between me and the man to whom I'd become engaged. And I thought that... Well, go on. Proceed with the testimony. Well, I thought that if I could talk to him myself, perhaps I could persuade him not to say anything detrimental to my... to my character. Oh, so he knew something detrimental to your character. He resented the fact that I refused to marry him and said that he would come between me and anyone that I might marry. Did he want to marry you? That is it. Isn't it a fact, Miss Manners, that Skylar Durkin had no intention of marrying you? That a marriage ceremony, in his estimation, was entirely unnecessary? No, no, that's not true. So your relationship was just platonic, eh? Yes. Hmm. Did you... Did you ever see this letter before? It's a love letter from you to Skylar Durkin. Yes, I, I wrote that letter. I object, Your Honor, on the grounds that the counsel for the defense has had no... The defendant has already admitted under oath that the letter is a communication between herself and the deceased. I intend to prove that its recovery motivated the crime.
The clerk of the court will read the letter into the evidence. Paris, France, June 6, 1932. My dear Skylar, what a thrill when your letter arrived and what a bitter disappointment when I read you will be unable to join me here. Seems as though everyone in Paris is gay except your Joan. Love is in the air here, Skylar, and lovers are everywhere I turn. If you were only here to hold me tightly in your arms and caress me, Paris would be perfect. If I were only the kind of woman who could turn to another man, even temporarily, I might find more happiness in this city of romantic dreams. I used to think all men alike, but that was before I met you. Now I know there can be no happiness without you, even though I pay the price. Come to me soon, my dearest, or permit me to return to you. Lovingly, your Joan. Now that your relationship with the deceased has been irrefutably established, Miss Manners, we will go into the matter of your latest fiancé's identity. Would you mind stating to the court the name of this very mysterious man? I'll tell you, if you really want to know. I'm the man. Oh, no. No. Please I'm finished with the witness. Swear the witness. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. State your name. Stephen Kennedy. Occupation. Lawyer. Present. Counsel for the defense. On the night of the murder, you were the fiancé of the defendant? I was Miss Manners' fiancé the night Mr. Durkin was shot. When did you last see the defendant before the killing? She came to my house about 10 o'clock. Tell the court what happened. She came to the house to break the engagement. She said that happiness was impossible with Dirk in my friend and her enemy. I refused to release her. I told her I didn't care what her past relationship with Durkin was. I insisted on an early marriage. What else? I told her I'd see Durkin in the morning and settle things. She didn't tell you she'd see Durkin first and settle with him? She had no reason to. I'd told her that I loved her. You loved her? Tell me, do you still love her? I refuse to answer that question on the ground that it's irrelevant, immaterial. The witness does not have to answer the question. Witness excused. They say that lawyers make very bad witnesses, Mr. Kennedy. You have proved no exception to the rule, and I want to thank you for your testimony. Testimony that may send your client to the electric chair. Confine your remarks to the case. If your honor pleases, I will ask for a short recess. In order to produce a witness who will testify that a much younger girl than the defendant was seen entering Skylar Durkin's room one hour before he was found dead. I want to change my plea to guilt. I killed Skylar Durkin. Order in the court! Order in the court! Finished, Barbara? You know, that's the first time I ever prepared a woman for the chair. It sure gives me the creep. Sure does. Hi, miss. 
We know your John Manners, and we're all for you. Look up, sister. Don't be scared. Keep up your nerve, sister. They ain't gonna burn no woman. Quiet, you mubs. She don't want to be disturbed. Buck up, sister. And remember, we're all your friends here. Thanks, boys. Hello, Jane. Well, welcome home, Miss Constance. Where's Mr. Stevens? Where's Joan? Mr. Stevens out of the city. He's been gone two weeks. He's married, of course, and Joan's with him. Well, uh, uh, shall I uh, shake you up a stimulant? You won't believe it, James, but I'm on the wagon. I guess Miss Manners before me. Miss Manners? Yes, why not? Why, she's the lady they're executing. Manners? Joe Manners? What for? Tell me, tell me! She murdered Mr. Durkin the night you went away. Get the district attorney's home right away. I've got to talk to him. Well, go on! Yes, sir. Governor won't grant a reprieve without new evidence. There is no new evidence, Stephen. You're holding something back. You're shielding someone. We've been all through that before. I can't believe you did it. I know another girl visited Durkin's apartment that night. Who was it? It was just a year ago tonight that we met on the Berengaria, Gary, Stephen, you remember? I fell in love then. And I've loved you ever since, Stephen. Then tell me who killed Durkin. There's only one hour left. If you let them execute Joan Manners, you're nothing short of a murder. Miss Kennedy, I can't get excited every time someone comes to me and says they committed a crime for which someone else has been convicted. She's innocent, I tell you. She's innocent. Oh, you must do something to stop this. I'll go into court and tell everything just as it happened. If you were present when Durkin was shot, you must remember the position of the body and where you left the death gun. Durkin was sitting in a chair when I left. The gun was on the floor where it fell after it went off. Hello, Jim. Uh? Get me the files in the Manners case. We'll see if what you say corresponds with the transcript of the evidence. Joan. Joan. It's almost time for the warden. Aren't you going to talk? There's nothing I could say now. Then you do know something you haven't told me. You're right, Miss Kennedy. What you say agrees with the officer's testimony. Then you phone the warden. Hello. Get me the warden at Sing Sing immediately. Rush this call through. Get Judge Johnson on the phone in the next room. Tell him to yes. phone the governor. It's urgent that we stop the execution of Joan Manners. Send a couple of the boys in here. Hello. How about that Albany call? Busy? We'll call the chief operator. Tell her to keep the line open. Official business. It's a matter of life and death. I hope you're telling me the truth, Miss Kennedy. It won't go well with you if you're not. I tell you every word I told you is the truth. Durkin grabbed me. He tore my dress. We struggled. And then the gun went off accidentally. Then why did you run away? Durkin said it was only a scratch. I even wished me one voyage. 
It would have been easy to clear you had you come into court and stated the facts. Uh, Joe, call the garage. Have a car ready to take me to the airport. Fastest driver you've got. Get a motorcycle escort. We want our way cleared through traffic. Okay. Hello? Hello? You've got the line, but they don't answer. Well, keep on trying. Don't let them stop. What do we do now? You leave it to me. May I play with you? It may be a comfort to you. Father of mercy and God of all comfort, we fly unto thee for succor in behalf of this thy servant, who is now under the sentence of condemnation. The day of her calamity is at hand, and she is accounted as one of those who go down into the pit. Blessed Lord, remember thy mercy, look upon her infirmity, and hear the voice of her complaint through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Um, may I read a little? If thou seek the Lord thy God, thou shalt find him. If thou seekest him with all thy heart, and with all thy soul. When thou in tribulation and all these things come upon thee, even in the latter days, if thou turn to the Lord thy God and shall be obedient unto his voice, for the Lord thy God is a merciful God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace, both now and forevermore. Amen. Time to go. One thing more I'd like to say to Mr. Kennedy. Then I'll be ready. You may. There's something I want to tell you before I go, Steve. Something that may harden you against me, but it may make it easier for you to forget. Nothing will ever harden me against you, Joan. I shall always believe you innocent. Stephen, promise that you'll always protect Carmen. That you'll keep her away from unscrupulous men so that she can't follow in the footsteps of her mother. Stephen, it would help a lot if you could walk a little way with me. May I? Savior, O holy and merciful Savior, 
Thou most worthy judge eternal, suffer us not at our last end, for any pains of death to fall from thee. Shut not thy merciful ears to our prayer, but spare us, Lord most holy, O God most mighty, O holy and merciful Savior. Hello? O God most mighty, O holy and merciful Savior, Thou most worthy judge eternal, deliver us not into the bitter pain of eternal death. Warden, the governor says you must delay the execution. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 